But all the time, it's that still small voice that you know that God speaks to us in our in our spirit, man. That we have to follow and believe and choose. It's a choice that we right. choose to believe that. Yeah. The Bible is very clear. Like all through the Old Testament, God just keeps saying, "If you would just turn." And the minute you turn, He's right there. So really, if I'm not doing the Word, then ultimately I don't have faith in the Word. That's that's the difference. It's like hearing the Word is okay. Oh, He's my good shepherd. He desires to lead me, but the question is, will I follow? Well, I believe it, it all, it, it, there has to be a relationship. You have to know that the Father loves you, that God loves you. Welcome to Winning Conversations and welcome to First Fridays. And we just love the opportunity that we have to be with you today, just uh, so you can be in on our conversation about Amen. the Word. Um, you know, we believe the Word of God is the foundation to everything. If we talk about winning conversations, um, understanding the Word has to be the foundation to that conversation because it's what's going to take us higher. It's what's going to bring about the prophetic Word in our lives. It's going to bring about the progressing, the advancing, experiencing promotion, and seeing our highest expectation fulfilled. So I want to wel welcome Eric and Nikki and Pastor Annette as we go on this journey uh, about growing in the Word. And uh, so you all ready to get into this? Yes, yes let's, let's do, it. do it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So just as we were praying over this, they, they, the, they, asked, us, they asked me, they said, what, what are we going to talk about? And what was in my heart is to talk about hearing and doing. Because uh, it's not just about being in the Word, but it's about are we doers of what we're hearing? Because that would bring success into our life. And the foundational scripture we're going to go uh, go on is Isaiah chapter 48, verse 17. And it says this, it says, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way that you should go. Oh, that you had heeded my commandment. Then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. And so it's in this heeding his word and hearkening to his word that brings about increase in our lives and bring about growth in our lives. Yeah, and we're living in a time where there's so many voices in our lives, um, so many influences. Um, John chapter 10 talks about the sheep and the shepherd. And I know that's not a concept that we, I mean, we don't have a whole lot of shepherds in our in our neighborhood, or, or sheep, <laughs> but um, Good point. but you know the shepherd knows his sheep, and it says that the sheep know the shepherd. It says that the sheep listen for his voice and they obey it, and it says that. Jesus is that good shepherd, and he calls them by name. I love that he calls them by name, because can you imagine if you had a hundred sheep, you would have to know their name instead of going, hey, you, I know what it's like having three or four children, and you get mixed <laughs> up with their names, but that shows an intimacy that he has with his sheep. It says he knows them, and he calls them by name, and he leads them, and it says that the sheep follow him. Yeah. They know when it's him that's calling and they follow him. Yeah. And he, it says that, of course, we know that Jesus came to, to give us life. So obviously, if we follow him, he's going to give us good pasture. That means right. life. Yeah. Right. He goes before you um, and makes sure that everything is safe before he leads you there. Right. Yeah, so he desires to lead us. Yeah. I think one of the uh, establishing foundations is, is that you read the scripture. You said we want to establish this on the word. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people ask, well, how do I know the will of God? Or how do I know how I hear his voice? And, you know, Dr. Spell has always taught his word is his will. That's it. And so if we go to his word, he's often can speak to us through his word. And then we ask the Holy Spirit to give us revelation of what we're reading right. uh, in the scripture. And then that's how we conduct our lives. One of the things that Nikki and I would teach our as we were youth pastoring for years and years, our young people, because a lot of times people think, well, the Bible is just a bunch of rules. Yeah. It's, just much, it's just a bunch of rules. you got to follow it, you know, and it's restricted. And Nikki would say, no, those rules are for your benefit. Right. Yeah. And they're not rules, they're promises of God and the yeah. ways of God. Yeah. And so when, it, when you talk about how God teaches us how to, pro how to profit, it means that he's teaching us the benefits yeah. of uh, what he's laid out in his word. Yeah. So good. 
You know, and I think just even with what Pastor Annette just was saying about the good shepherd, Mm -hmm. it's knowing he's a good shepherd and a good shepherd desires to lead us in those places of profit. Right. And it's like, but how is he going to lead us? We hear his voice. Mm -hmm. And as you just said, it's just hearing his will. It's hearing his voice, which is, this is his voice to us. When you may not hear his audible voice, we have this word speaking to us, you know, every day, every day that we choose to get into it, it's leading us into increase. It's leading us into advancement. It's leading us into promotion. Mm -hmm. So Nikki, what are some, like maybe some things that the Lord has spoken to you or things that you've seen in the word and you're like, wait a minute, I have to, I I have to actually do that. I have to do this. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I think there's so many examples. I think marriage probably for me is the biggest. I mean, I didn't grow up with brothers or anything. So you know, having Eric in my life was like a big eye opener. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I had a twin, so I had lived with someone my whole life. But having him come in and be so totally different than my world, you know, you have to learn how to do the word. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, you have to do the word. And so marriage is a huge opportunity to do that. You got to go to the word. I mean, you can't go by what you've seen other people do, right. how they're, you know what I mean? Because their marriages aren't always great. Yeah. You know, you can go to your friends. And talk, and talk, and they, they tell you what to do, but that's not always going to work, right. you know. But yeah. the way, like we say, winning conversations is with the word. If you go, yeah. if you can find what the word has to say about it and do that, mm-hmm. you're going to have success. Yeah. So as we like, you know, started out in marriage, you know, I had, I had, we both had a lot to learn. We were young, 21, and so we had a lot to learn. What does this mean? And for some reason, you know, the church, I don't know. I d- I don't remember hearing a whole lot of conversations. I'm sure I was in women's and men's meeting, but maybe that wasn't my life then, so I didn't listen. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. but uh, you know, you tend to me. listen to what applies to you at the moment. Yeah. Right. And uh, but yeah, I think um, you know you hear you know all those p- pipe in if you want <laughs> about things you learn. You well, probably learned more than me. well you do and and you learn you know god teaches us to love and it's it's just everything that's in contrast to the to the world and and the world's ways and so really what when you come into the kingdom of god it's learning god's ways you know and and what he thinks and how we're supposed to respond and how we're supposed to talk and how we're supposed to behave i mean even going back if you if if you've been tuning into the winning conversations you've heard People say this through all of the broadcasts, yeah. you know, what God has told them, what they've done, what it created, mm-hmm. produced in their life. Yeah. I mean, isn't it amazing? Yes, it's amazing. All they, they have tears. to do is just I tear do up. what I say. Yeah. Just do what I say. Just do what and I say. And you know, that's the whole, and now we have this, this Holy Spirit, this mm-hmm. God, not only with us, but in us. Amen. Who says he'll, his job is to guide us and direct us. He longs to. And I know you probably know where the scripture is that says, you know, that voice, you hear a voice behind you that says, this is the way, walk in it. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that that's how it is. It's like I remember Christy Jean Greco talking about Tommy's heart attack mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. how they came and gave her the came out and said, This is this is a massive major thing. Mm-hmm. And you know, at first your yeah. your emotions, your panic, yeah. you know, you're hearing someone say yeah. this. But but she said immediately, like all of a sudden the peace came on her. Yeah. You know, and the word rises up in you. Right. And so, you know, if you if you talk long enough with anyone in church, you're mm-hmm. going to hear them say these kinds of things, the yeah. way God's directed us. We all have gotten to where we are now in life yeah. successfully, yeah. those bl- places where we're succeeding because we've done this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think for me, you know, success and failure in my life has been when I chose to do the word and when I didn't oh do the word. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, um, for sure. I mean, I remember going through a difficult t- thing that I didn't have to go through, and I had... Uh, my mom tell me, I had friends tell me, I had the the word tell me, and if, even in spite of that, I was like, oh, well, it'll all work out. Yeah. And, and and I just think of the delay that it caused in my life, but I'm so glad for his mercy. Yes. Yeah. I'm so glad Thank for his mercy because, because when I was choosing to then do the word to get out of that, God brought peace. My peace became like a river. My you know, it, it, my rights is like the ways of the sea. So it was like when that changes, but it all came back to, you know, am I going to do what God is saying? Yeah. Amen. Am I going to do what God's saying? So it's a choice. It is. It goes all the way back to choose life or choose death. And life is in the word. It, it is in hearing his voice, 
you know, in our spirit, man. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, I think we want to, we want to put out a fleece. We want to, we want to sign mm-hmm. that what we're hearing is, but oftentimes it's that still small voice, yeah. that, you know, that God speaks to us in our, in our spirit, man, that we have to follow and believe and choose. It's a choice that we right. choose to believe that. Yeah. And I'm so thankful, like you just said, when we don't listen and we get ourselves in a mess, the Bible is very clear. Like all through the Old Testament, God just keeps saying, if you would just turn to me. Yeah. And the minute you turn, he's right there. Right. He doesn't like beat you over the head. He's like, yeah, let me lead you out. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm so thankful for his mercy, his, his rich in mercy, yeah. great yeah. love, rich in mercy. Yeah, that, what, we didn't use it all up. Yeah. <laughs> it's never every, ending, it's everlasting. New every, it's new every morning. It's new every morning. It's an morning. endless Amen. supply. It's new every yeah. morning. Um, you know, um, that just reminds me of Isaiah 48. We were talking about it. Um, where you hear the heart of the Father when he says, Oh, that you had hearkened to my commandments. Then your peace and prosperity would have been like a flowing river and your righteousness <laughs> like the waves of the sea. Yeah. Don't you hear the, the Father's heart in that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, if you had if just. If you would have just. Oh, but it doesn't mean he's going to leave us in our fallen state. He comes and he picks us up and he. He carries us, and he tells us again. Yeah. He's so merciful because yeah. we've all made mistakes. Right. We've all heard God's voice, and we've gone our own way thinking we knew better. Yeah. I think that's a good verse to include. Like even now, if, if, if there's people listening and, you're, and it's not, you're, you don't have peace like a river. Right. You know, God is saying, if you would just heed my commandments, I so want to help you. Yeah. Yeah. Just heed my commandments. And there's commandments, whether it's parenting, where you're stressed out, or at work with an employer, a boss. Yeah. There's Forgiving. verses on all of that. Yes. Yeah. Forgiving. Yeah. Yes. You know, yeah. What about Jesus' command? You know, come to me. Yeah. You know, we're just bringing that up because if you're watching and you're overwhelmed, come to me, all that are labor yeah. and heavy laden. And yeah. what do you say? I'll give you, I'll rest. Give you rest. So that's that's his word. But the hearkening part or the heeding part is not just listening, but it's actually doing it. Just com- coming to him. If you're yeah. if you're heavy laden, come to him. And what? Then that rest comes. That yeah. that peace comes. And what are his commands for? For our benefit. benefit. For our benefit. <laughs> it's for our peace. Yeah. For our joy. And so some of those things we may not see when the Lord tells us to d- to do things, or it says in the words that we're doing things that are contrary to what everybody else is doing. Yeah. You know, but it's for our benefit. Yeah. Amen. You know, it's the we we call them the the. That was the Abraham blessing, uh, the Deuteronomy 28, yes. right. you know, I'm blessed coming in, I'm blessed going out. And we can shout about that. But really, the, the truth of that scripture yeah. is found in our topic. Yeah. It's found in our topic about hearing and doing. Because what does Deuteronomy 28 say? It says, if you would hearken, hearken unto yes. my voice and you would do what I'm telling you to do, then yeah. this would happen. Then this would happen. Then this would happen. And so by being a doer of the word, we're setting ourselves up for success. Yeah. So let's say that, you know, I tithe and I'm a, I'm a believer in tithing. But let's say I believe in tithing because I, cause I hear it mm-hmm. in the word. Yeah. But how do I know if I really believe in tithing? Mm-hmm. When you do it. When you do it. Right. <laughs> so if you're not doing it, then yeah. you, don't, you're not, you don't really believe it. Exactly. Yeah, so... So really, if I'm not doing the word, then ultimately I don't have faith in the word. Right. Oh. Right. <laughs> really? Yes, that's exactly right. I mean, because because it's just, it just becomes a good idea. But when I have faith in the word, mm-hmm. and I know that I know that I know that this is God's word speaking to me, then if I wanted the fruit of it, then I need to do it. Right. Um, I remember, uh, you know, about, a, about nine months after I got born again, I... Um, I had this, uh, my fa- uh, my pastor's father-in-law had his own haircutting place, and I had a bunch of ladies that ladies and guys that worked for him, and he had his, and he still cut hair even though he could retire. He just loved having conversations with people. And um, and so he said, well, come in, I'll, I'll cut your hair. And and I think he had a tactic there or by the Holy Spirit for <laughs> me because he, he, I sit down, and he, I guess he has a captive audience to preach to me. Right. Yeah. And all of a sudden he said, he was like, Justin, do you tithe? Wow. I'm like, well, <laughs> I, I can't afford to tithe. 
Right. Yeah. Because I mean, I was looking at how much money I was making and what my bills were and it just didn't, it, it didn't compute. And he told me this, he goes, Justin, he said, I got to the place where it wasn't just tithing on the 10%. He goes, but I tithed on what I wanted to make. Amen. And I was like, well, I sure want to make more than what I'm making now. Right. And I, I took it, I, I, I sought the Lord about it, but there was something in here was like, almost like, prove me. Like, do, are you going to do what you're hearing? Right. And you know, I wasn't even doing 10%, let alone do what I want to make. And so at that time I was making $200 a week. And so my tithe should have been $20. Right. And, and I said, but, you know, I need to make 400 a week. And so out of that 200 I started tithing $40 a week. Mm -hmm. And it was within a matter of six to eight months that all of a sudden someone called me out of the blue at a job I was working at on the phone at the workplace and offered me a job over the phone. I'd never met them. And they'll say, you'll start at $400 a week. Wow. And, and so I was like, I was like, this stuff works. <laughs> right? This stuff works. <laughs> the word works. <laughs> it works. It. And, and, but it was like doing the word, it was doing the word. And, and, and so even though that, that the guy cutting my hair didn't, um, thought it may have been just a conversation to have with me, but it was by the Holy spirit that is what caused me to start being a doer of the word. And, oh, I'm so grateful. And I think a lot of people start out like that where they go, I, I, I look at my bills and it's we're in a deficit here. We're, we're in the red. <laughs> yeah. And you want me to tithe? That's like an, that's, they, they look at it as another bill rather than, you know, that's how we step into faith Yeah, is, is oh, to that you had take needed that, my commandments. Oh, that yeah, you would take that step of faith. Yeah. And, and start, you yeah. know, and then God starts working out the, the rest of this stuff where now you're not in a deficit. Yeah. You're amen. I love that God uses other people that the Holy Spirit will speak to someone else to yeah. talk to you yeah. about exactly what the right words at the right time. Yeah. yeah, because we really do live in a place where there's so many voices and the word is readily available to anybody. It's just turning the hymn. I don't know if y'all remember, do you remember the promise books, the little books, promise books? Like mm -hmm. if you were, if you had discouragement, you would just have to look up, yes. look up oh, discouragement yeah. and here's all these all scriptures, the scriptures on, yeah. you know, on <laughs> forgiveness. Here's all yeah. the scriptures on forgiveness. But there has to be, you have to go to the word. You have to be ready to listen and to, to hear what he's got to say about whatever it is that you're going through. Yeah. I mean, because you can Google anything um, and you've got friends that won't tell you scripture and won't right. be led by the Holy Ghost. So it's real important to turn to him. Yeah. That's the first thing you've got to do is go to the word. Yeah. What do you have to say, God? Because you hold the words of life. Yeah. 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 You hold the words of life. It's like you said, you have to be ready. So if, you're, if you make a decision that if you find it in the word, you'll do it, yeah. it starts there. Yeah. It starts and there. you have to be real with yourself. Like, will I really do it? No matter what it costs me. Yeah. Like going back to what you said about come to me, all you who labor, yeah. and I'll give you rest. And then he says, and you'll learn from me. Yeah. And he pretty much says, I'm humble. That's it. And that yeah. will give rest to your souls. Most people don't think by being humble, they're going to get any rest for their souls. Mm -hmm. They think they're going to get beat up and walked over. Yeah. But that's not the word. Yeah. You know, so it's just, you know, it's a different way. This, this kingdom we live in. Yeah. Yeah. has different ways that really do produce results we, the world wants, yeah. but well, they keep doing it the world's way. And y what you all talked about when you went into the schools, the way they viewed God, and this is how the world views God, is that it's a yoke. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's bondage, you know, to have yeah. to do everything all that it rules. says. There's so many rules. Can't have any fun. I can't have any fun, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. I, you know, I'm going to get saved. I'm going to listen to God when I get older, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, um, but he says, my, Jesus says, take my yoke. My yoke is easy. easy. Yeah. It's easy. So easy. Yeah. Learn from me, he says. Yeah. Because there's consequences to sin and there's hurt. Yeah. There's regret. What's that verse? Hard is the way it's of the transgression. It's hard is the way of the transgression. Oh my gosh. And so yeah. in God's love, he gave us commands in his love so that we wouldn't, he doesn't want to experience hurt mm -hmm. and regret and, right. and all the stuff that, you know, you can think about 12 years from now. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's what, and that's why, you know, in Joshua, he says, meditate in the word day and night, mm -hmm. because there's so many words. It's like you said, so many voices. 
so many words coming at us. I was just recently at a business meeting, and there was there's these threats coming up from different from different people against the corporation, you know, and these are words that yeah. you can you can grab and meditate and people. So that's how people get into fears. They take words and they begin to meditate on words. And it's like you cling to them. And yet the Bible is so clear, like, especially in the amplified version, cling to God, adhere to God. But yet you find yourself clinging to these words. People are speaking to you and you just got to let them go. Like don't cling to those words. Yeah. So he says, meditate, meditate, like, like chew on the word. And that's why I believe, you know, Dr. Savelle has it when he, when he puts out the prophetic word and then we make up the cards or yeah. the bookmarks is to put it before our yeah. eyes. Amen. So we see it with our eyes and then each day, start the day thinking of that, meditating on it mm-hmm. so that our, our life is, uh, you know, headed in that direction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause it, cause the rest of that is cause when we do that, when we hear that word and we meditate it, it says it makes our way prosperous. Mm-hmm. There, there, there's a way. And, and I think a lot of times we may look, people look at the word as, okay, I'm just hearing the word or I'm listening to the word. But it has to, it has to come to a place where when the word gets so in you that it's like, I, I just have to do this. This, is, this yeah. is life to me. He says, incline your ear unto me. Mm-hmm. But, you know, attend unto my word. And why? Because it's life and hell to yes. all our flesh. And, and here we have 66 books of life. And the thing is, is all he wants us to do is do it. Yeah. yeah. And I, yeah. I love that he says, incline your ear to my voice, my son. Yeah. He mm-hmm. calls him my son. Right. Yeah. My son, hear what I'm saying. Yeah. Hear like my a good heart. father. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. you know, it goes back to just the, the good shepherd. Mm-hmm. He desires to lead us. The question is, do we desire to follow? Right. That's That's the difference. It's like. Hearing the word is, okay, oh, he's my good shepherd. He desires to lead me, but the question is, will I follow? Right. Because in that, in that chapter in John 10, it says that his sheep go in and out, and they find pasture. Mm-hmm. So the good shepherd wants to take us to pasture, wants to take us to fruitful places, yes. prosperous places. Right. He, wants, he, wants us, he wants success in our life more than we want That's success right. in our life. Absolutely. If you have a desire for success, you have to understand his desire for your success is far greater. Amen. You, you desire healing. You know, his desire for healing in your life is, is, is stronger than your desire for healing in your yes, life. So true. Yeah. And, and if we could understand the Father's heart, yeah. that he was just like, oh, if you had just hearkened to my word, if yeah. you had just heard it and done my word, then your peace would have been like a river. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. And your righteousness would have been like the waves Amen. of the sea. Well, I believe it, it all, it, it, there has to be a relationship. Yeah. You have to know that the Father loves you, that yeah. God loves you. Um, it just reminded me, the Holy Spirit reminded me when I was, I was it was my first year in college. I was, I was 18, um, and I was applying for a job to be a foster parent for eight children. And I was meeting with the director, and they gave me one of the questions. One of the questions was, if you had a foster son come into your home and you know you showed him to his room and he got everything out and he started putting paraphernalia drug paraphernalia on the walls Mm -hmm. in in his room um what would you do about it how would you respond to this new foster son that you're getting and I remember just hearing the Holy Ghost say to me what to say because he was teaching me something but my response was I would sit on his bed, get to know him, ask him how he's doing, if he's comfortable, if there's anything he needs. And I I said, I would build a relationship with him. He's got to know that I love him first and that I care about him because the next words that I have to say, then he'll heed them. He will obey them. If he knows how much I love him, then he'll know when I tell him drugs are not good for you. That lifestyle is going to hurt you. It's going to lead you down a path that you don't want to go. But if I walked into that room and I immediately said, this is my house, those will not go up on that wall. I don't want to hear about, you know, any of that. If I demanded him to obey me rather than let him know how much I loved him, he would never obey me. And I really believe that's what got me the job. It was just that answer. But that's the same thing with with God, with our Father. 
We have to have a relationship with him. We have to know that he loves us and everything that he has to say. This is a love letter. I mean, this is God's love letter to us. Faith is easy when you understand love. When you understand love. Well, um, I think that's a great great thing that we can end on. And I want to pray as we close out this session because I believe there's people watching today that you needed to hear this. And you need to know that every word that's spoken to you or preached to you from Heritage of Faith is always from a position of how much the Father loves you. Because his desire is for you to not just hear his word, but to be able to do his word because it's in that you'll walk and experience peace like you've never known peace. So, Father, we wa- we thank you for all those that have tuned in today. And I just thank you, Lord, right where they are. I thank you for your grace, your ability, your strength. And I thank you that you are fanning the flame of the hunger for the word of God on the inside of their hearts. And as as that is taking place in them, Lord, I thank you that they are progressing, they're advancing, they're experiencing promotion, and they will see their highest expectation fulfilled. I thank you that 2024 will be a year where they make a decision to hear the word but also do the word. Yes. We just thank you for the time that we have had together. We thank you for this amazing conversation that I believe you've been in the center of. Amen. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I encourage you, go give him Jesus. <laughs>